Welcome to the Heart of Hospitality podcast hosted by Duncan O'Rourke, CEO Accor Northern Europe. Hospitality matters because it has heart. In this series, we'll be speaking to our guests to celebrate the moments and lives that make this sector so special and to spotlight the true heart of hospitality, people. In the second episode of season two, Duncan O'Rourke speaks to Dr. Ines Blal, the Executive Dean and Managing Director of the EHL Hospitality Business School in Lausanne. They exchange on the fundamentals of education in hospitality, the importance of purpose and authenticity when attracting young talents into the industry, and how being part of a team creates everlasting memories. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. I'm super happy to be able to today have a lovely conversation with Dr. Ines Blau. Dr. Ines Blau is the Executive Dean and Managing Director of the worldwide famous Ecole Hotelier Lausanne. Uh, Ines, thank you so much for taking so much of your valuable time to us. Uh, EHL, or the Ecole Hotelier, is widely considered one of the world's leading hospitality universities. It's steeped in history, I think over 125 years. It has championed Swiss hospitality, educated leaders uh, around the world. And for those who are listening who are not familiar with the EHL, please tell us a little bit about the school, uh, the work you do there, and, and, uh, and as an introduction to what's going on. Well, thank you for having me, first of all, Duncan. This is exciting for me. Um, so EHL, as you said, Ecole, previously known as Ecole Hôtelière de Lausanne, it's um, a leading institution in hospitality, and we train, we prepare young, younger generations for, for the hospitality industry. Um, it has grown, although now you said a school and an institution, EHL now is a group of education. And it stems from vocational in our campus in Pasug, which is near Davos in the Grison area. And uh, we also uh, have uh, here in the campus Lausanne, obviously, our bachelor programs. And we extended that to five masters. And we also have uh, certificates and non-granting uh, credit certificates. So the EHL group is wider than the school in Lausanne. And it has grown into that uh, great um, institution. And finally, I just want to say that also in the EHL group, we also have an advisory branch. And so it, it's really beyond this traditional school uh, that people might think about or think of. As of my role, you mentioned that I'm the executive dean. So as a dean, I'm responsible of faculty and managing director. So I'm also responsible of the administration and everything that is related basically to academia for the campus Lausanne and part of campus Pasuk for the bachelor degree. Oh, that's fantastic. Why, why do you think EHL has such a strong reputation? Well, um, personally, this is my personal opinion. I think it's, it's thanks to the students and the graduates that we put on the market. We really work hard uh, with the teams to, to work on human development of our learners and making sure that they really respond to the needs of the employers. And I think, and we call them our ambassadors, actually, our graduates. So I think it's, it's our students, our graduates, and their skills that make EHL reputation since 1893. Yeah, no, indeed. And Ines, talk to me a little bit about your career. How did you get to where you are today uh, at Lausanne? Oh, um, I mean, like any career, I think it's some some opportunities, uh, encounters. But essentially, I started from, from another background. I started from finance initially. And then I met hospitality. And I always say I got the virus. It's, it's such an inspiring industry. Um, and from working there, I thought, well, I, I'd like to have uh, more education. And I came to EHL, actually, for my master's degree 20 years ago, oh, thinking wow. that I would come back to the industry. And then I, I met strategy and, uh, and, uh, and uh, my mentor in strategy. And I enrolled in a PhD in his program in Virginia Tech. And from there, well, I, I always thought I, will, I wanted, I loved strategy, but I wanted it to be in action. For me, it hasn't it doesn't have to be separated from 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 management and and from what corporation do and so ehl was really a perfect fit for me in that sense. So I started as lecturer here, then got my PhD, and then the institution started to be more active in research. So I got an opportunity there. Since day one, I was in administration. So I really, I was 
I'm really grateful for the for the path I had at EHL. And then in 2017, um, there was an opportunity to for the faculty council to elect a new dean and managing director. And I was really I'm really humbled to have been elected by my peers by the faculty council. So this is where <laughs> what happened before and what I got why I got where I am now. Yeah, that's fantastic. And Ines, you're very humble. I just want to tell everybody, all the viewers there, and, and also a little bit because our core, we also focus on equality, but you were the first woman and the youngest person to take the deanship in 2017 uh, since the creation of Never 130. That's, that's absolutely fantastic. Does, does all, in, what is the pressure and expectations for you as a dean? Uh, uh, take us through that a little bit. Um, the expectation, as I think, when I exchanged with other deans from other business schools, because our curriculum is very much the one of a business school, of a very special business school, because everything happens in the context of hospitality and, and with all the know-how around it. So the expectation, I would say, is maybe to have been elected as my peers, by my peers, sorry, and um, and being re-elected again. Um, so really support the faculty to, to the mission that we crafted together, which is to have have the best, finest quality and a progressive learning and teaching. So the, the pressures, I guess, is in, uh, in every uh, position for managing director also to, to manage the teams, to, to craft the strategy. Um, you mentioned the fact that I'm a woman and the youngest. Frankly, for me, it, it, it doesn't really count in or factor in. <laughs> I come with my competencies and I try to have in my teams complementary ones. And so it's really managing director role or dean role like in any other corporation or institution. The interesting thing at EHL is that we are really at the crossroad of hospitality and education. And I found that fascinating. So the expectation now, how do you bring together all these stakeholders and, and find a positive impact, collective one together, um, be it for the employer, who are also partners for our research, for our students, our learners, to, to really equip them with, with what they need for their careers. So I think most of the expectation, at, at least that's how I live it, is, is, is for these stakeholders and the value we want to propose to them and execute um, for them. That's right. What is your vision for formal education in the hospitality and how does that sit alongside skills learned in the trade? I found it really exciting to be where I am today and where EHL is today. It's because we are finally talking about the fundamentals of education. And, and there's something just that doesn't add up in my head, and, and we discuss it a lot with my teams, is that I really don't understand this dichotomy, this separation between education and practice. For me, it just doesn't add up. If, if, if you go for so-called formal education, it's because you want to apply it later on. And so uh, I, I really, and that's why I feel really privileged to be at EHL, because we're trying every day to bridge that and, and to fill in that gap. So what do you think, what, what experiences hospitality can give to a person that is so valuable, uh, uh, specifically from the school and that going forward? The skills that we try to transfer to, to transfer to our learners are the skills that come from the hospitality DNA. I give you a very simple example. Oh, okay. For an 18-year-old showing up on time with their best suit, uh, groomed or with a light makeup and, and really being aware of the impact that they will have on others, that's something that we learn from hospitality. Having, for example, your private life and maybe great parties before, but showing up on time and to be your best. Personally, I learned that from, from hospitality, from my time in hospitality. These are what are so-called soft skills. They call them soft skills, but I think it's long, lifelong skills. Um, and, and these are the skills that we have identified from hospitality and that we willingly transfer through our curricula and, and the activities to the learners. Um, yes, you need to know the numbers. Yes, you need to know the finance, the, the subtleties of mergers and acquisition. But behind it, it's people who do it. Mergers and acquisition, for example, it's a negotiation between interests. So understanding that it's people with their interests who are negotiating adds a layer 
to to that transaction and to that analysis. And uh, and we see it from experience. That's what our students bring to the table when they are hired by bankers or uh, um, or even non for profit organization who um, who have to deal with special clients or special situations. Another example is we have some of our students who are hired by the Red Cross for food logistics. So you see, um, the transferability is in our human skills, but also in the service design. How do you design an impeccable service for the user experience? And hospitality is the best location to get that information and that skill from. Indeed, indeed. And that hospitality DNA, as you mentioned, the soft core skills, um, I agree with you. They, they serve, even, even for me who stayed in this career, my my entire life uh, has served me in, in other parts of my life as well, this this hospitality. You know, it's, it's challenging because, you know, uh, there's a lot there's a lot of competition out there. How do you think the sector, both school, schools, institution and operators like us can attract talent from other industries to give them a platform uh, for these transfer skills to really, really shine? What do you think... We, we in the industry need to do better, if, if, if you have a comment on that. Well, I do have a comment because it's really lengthy discussions we have amongst ourselves and with our students. Uh, for example, I give you some examples of students that come to our school for the bachelor degree and they are passionate of their, the industry and, and they want to work there. But after a few experiences, they say no. And so we try to dig in and try to understand why and, and, and to, to see how we can work on that. And, and, we, and then we share it with the employers to, to, to really try to, to share that information. On the other hand, in the master level, we also have these um, what we call career shifters or career changers. So lawyers, doctors, um, engineers that come to us with that passion and at a certain age who want to uh, educate themselves about hospitality because they want to work in hospitality. So my message to these employers based on these experiences, make sure that you know that you have people that are passionate about that industry and everything that it brings and make sure that you deliver to them the context and the structure to be able to live that passion. And, and some hoteliers and some brands are doing it really well. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a growing trend and the COVID has accelerated that. I'm really happy to see that there is all this questioning about how to manage the cap human capital differently. And I think by working on that angle, we will certainly be able to share and communicate how great our industry, how fulfilling a career in, in an industry is. Absolutely. And, and the industry is full of these wonderful stories. Uh, I'll just share one with you. Uh, one of our talents in Novotel in the UK joined, uh, joined, he actually joined the team last summer. He had a career in engineering in Hong Kong and, and a degree in pure and applied mathematics. Last summer, he attended a recruitment fair of ours at a hotel and was offered a trial. And he has since moved around the hotel and departments and absolutely loves it, shining to his guests and colleagues. And he, he actually wrote something very nice. He said, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. <laughs> and I think, I think this industry is full of that, so full of these wonderful stories. Uh, we just need to promote them and communicate them more. And this is hence one of the reasons we also have platforms, uh, platforms such as this and why we're so grateful that you've... Uh, You've done this. Do you see this desire for purpose and human connection in your students? Absolutely. I mean, for us, it's it's um, it it was a fact of life, but now it's even stronger after COVID and with this new generation. Um, they they are really the difference between them, this new generation, the bachelor program, or myself is is that they they really looking for a purpose. If they're gonna work, they they want that work to mean something. And it is super inspiring, frankly. And for our master program students, it's also the same. Either they come from the hospitality or from outside, and they want to continue to have an impact and positive impact. And that's why I think EHL has a great role to play in that and is been playing a great role in that. 
That's right. And you know, the younger generation base has a lot of decisions to make, you know, be it brand yeah. choice or <laughs> consumer or potential employees. And it's very much based on their values. <laughs> they want to know that the promises made are true. Um, and it's not just about talking anymore. Uh, you have to actually prove to them, yeah. which, is, uh, which is very important. That's what makes this younger generation tick. What are the values they seek for, do you think, in a potential employee? You know, it's, it's very hard for me to generalize. Um, when we pick our students, I mean, we have more than 3,000 learners with 120 nationalities. We cannot say we're looking, obviously, we have some guidelines, but we're really looking for this individuality and this passion for human interactions. And, and it, so it can come in so many colors and so many purposes. And, and, and that's our role at EHL as human development guider and tutor to help them understand what is it really that they are looking for. And so I, it's really hard for me to say what's the one purpose. Every person will have their, their own personal intrinsic motivation and, and purpose. And, and we see our role as educator. That's why the word formal educator is a bit upsetting for me because it's not what we do at EHL. Yeah. And so they... Each one of them will have a purpose and it's okay. And they have to define their own f success measure. And for some of them, it can be money and it's okay. <laughs> for some of them, it, it can be social interactions, but they have to explicitly define them so that we can help them with their with crafting their career or at least their, their professional path. So it's really hard for me to say there is a purpose, but for sure, they want a purpose, they want to clarify it, and they are really how do you say, observe the school or their environment or their employer to make sure that the, the promise is delivered, that people are walking the talk. This is a generation of, you know, who has been in a digital environment with advertising, with all, you know, deep fakes and everything. So they want people with authenticity that are walking the talk. I think it's okay for some company to say we want to provide value to our shareholder. That's our mission. So that the the future graduate can say okay this correspond to me or no and i can choose so they want that agreement to be clear that's right that's right and obviously a key value is sustainability of course uh, and, and sustainability is something you you and ehl take very very seriously just like we have to at a at our court i understand you have an environmentally and social ethos there There's, uh, at EHR. How is this reflected in what you do and why is it so crucial in creating more caring future leaders because of this? Again, it's critical because we, we, we co-create with our students and our faculty. So if you say, for example, yeah, I want to be, you know, be more aware and careful with my waste management. Well, if, if they see that you are not, it, it's it's very disappointing and then you lose them, you lose your stakeholders. And, and, and I think that's the real message that I was also trying to convey with that purpose is really walking the talk. So at EHL, yes, at every level, be it in our infrastructure, be it in our service, in the curriculum, obviously. One of our learning outcomes for most of our programs is, is to make um, good citizens. <laughs> so it can also be in the extracurricular activities, social awareness of their impact, um, the same as the one we have um, with their professional attire. It's the same thing, how much you have of a possible positive impact on someone. So it's really it will take a whole podcast about how we do it uh, and how we apply it. But it, we try to be very aware with our stakeholders uh, that, that we are delivering on that promise. And also, I, I must be honest, I always tell my teams and the students, it's a work in progress. We are learning about the new technologies, about the new ways, the new methods. We are creating our own in our research institutes. So it's, it's a whole collaborative and, and, and social movement that we have to do together. And, and, and this is really in our DNA also to be in the innovation and learning together as a community. Because we have to think about the new society and the new way to, to run all this, you know, the, the, uh, the new, be it ecology or even sociology, social changes. Absolutely. You know, at a core, we nurture these opportunities for Hartis. And Hartis uh, is what we call 
um, artists. We don't call them employees. We, we think they are artists in, mm -hmm. in providing hospitality with their heart. And so we call them the artists. Mm -hmm. But what we do is we, we nurture opportunities for artists to zigzag their careers across roles, industry, continents. And we encourage this and enable, enable our talents to be themselves and or they can be whatever path they choose to be. Um, this shift in recent years previously has changed uh, in, in the hospitality. Uh, is it something you feel your students are aware of? And does this appeal to students, this zigzagging, moving different uh, continents? W what is your opinion? Obviously, it appeals to them. I mean, we choose them. They will become citizens of the world, but we choose them also because they are open. So maybe they have traveled or they want to travel. So zigzagging in countries, definitely. <laughs> uh, yeah. In experiences, they are hungry for it. Uh, frankly, um, their experience, I was talking earlier about some of our students going in the hospitality industry for, for experience and internship and coming back and saying never again. And we discuss with them. And sometimes it's because they weren't given that perspective. Um, right. um, they come into very rigid structure. Um, sometimes the hospitality industry is super rigid about what can be done and what cannot i cannot generalize obviously but sometimes it does happen and and so they come back saying hmm it's not what i expected i thought it would be more about human and and human capital development so we work with them in identifying what what is it that they wanted and and how they can fulfill that but again i don't like to generalize we have 25000 alumni and i can tell you it's really 25000 combination of a career and, and a person um so some of them would like to settle down uh, and it's okay <laughs> so some of them are really happy to have a very settled life where they don't move a lot, but they progress in their career. And I think they have to be clear with themselves and their employer about that. And, and it's hard to, you know, we talk a lot about diversity nowadays, but I think the heart of it is it's the diversity of us human beings with our needs, our history and our aspirations. I totally agreed. And I think, uh, I think sometimes you have dropped the ball a little bit, which leads on to the next question. What do you think or how can we inspire the next generation coming through HO to choose hospitality? Um, what do we need to do better uh, with working with, uh, with EHO and, and the industry as a whole? What, what do you think we could do? I think there are different things. One thing, and that's what we are working on, is what I was mentioning earlier, that gap between so-called formal education and the trade. Why do we have that gap? Why do we, us in, in, in educational institution, have programs? And then companies like yourself, like Accor, would have also uh, uh, an education program. Why don't we um, join forces together? And, and it would be so much, it would have, it would bring so much value to the learner to say, okay, this is the theory, this is the research, this is our experience, and this is how it's done today on the market. And I think that would be fantastic. Um, and, and that would be new um, for, for any job market and not just for hospitality. And I think we can innovate there. We have everything that it takes to be creative and innovative compared to any other industry. And, and I'm really hopeful because I'm seeing some companies joining effort together. We do in our, at EHL with our um, research institutes, with our curriculum, but I think there's so much more that can be done. And the second thing is really to work on our capital management, our strategy about this capital. Um, the hospitality industry has been, and, and other industries, frankly, um, have been thinking about HR, okay, how can I use them for in the institutional need, which is perfect. But clearly the new generation and the current job market is challenging that. And the discussion should be, what can we be doing together? What can we do together? And so the human capital is the convergence between what the institution needs, but also what each individual need. And it's a lot of work, but frankly, I've seen it work in, 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 in some companies and hotels. And so we should really try harder. And we are, and I think it's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's so important uh, to what you said that that blend of, of getting a so-called formal, I mean, um, I, I like you, I don't like to use the word formal, but that formal education, but then straight in with the industry at the same time, 
Um, and our core would be would love to uh, <laughs> to join you on that journey. Uh, uh, absolutely. Wonderful. What do you think is so special about the hospitality industry? Oh, so many things. Uh, I'm a passion. As I as I told you, I got the virus. I came from finance. And I got um, one of my first internships. So my family owns hotels in Tunisia, now just one. And I thought I would take the lazy path <laughs> when I was 20 and, and not find an internship and end up in my family hotel. And it was such an experience. It was hard, really, physically. And I think my parents intended that <laughs> to be <laughs> as a learning experience. But I learned so much. Um, And, and the virus, I got it, um, to be honest, the second I did a, a very um, demanding um, dinner shift, a big banquet, more than a thousand people. And I was doing the service and, and the shift between this great, elegant atmosphere at the dinner table and then getting into the kitchen. And, and it was a team effort, intense and sometimes so quiet because everybody was so concentrating in delivering the next dish perfectly. And I thought, wow, this is so exciting. Um, I, I still, when I talk about it, I have goosebumps. <laughs> it was 25 years ago. <laughs> this team effort, and, and, and I know all the preparation. We were working on it for two days before, this logistics, you know, ordering the food, having the team, the scheduling. is such a great project and management. And then the after, when at 4 a.m. We, we cleaned everything, we are exhausted, and we sit together, and we joke, and we laugh. It was just fantastic as a human interaction. These people, I still have connection with them. And, and we felt so proud about delivering that service in such intense circumstances. And for me, that's the summary of hospitality. And that's what I bring to my job today. You know, as an MD, we can have a lot of stress and we have to deliver. But you bring the team together, you motivate them, you know they have a purpose, and it's so wonderful to do that together. And I learned that from hospitality. You feel that you, you are part of something. And I didn't feel that outside. Yeah, that's fantastic. I was going to ask you if you could sum up the industry <laughs> in one sentence, but you've actually done that already. That's lovely. Listen, I really, I really wanted to, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious how much time I'm taking from you, but I really wanted to thank you so much for taking time uh, to speak to us. Uh, Ecole Hotel de has, uh, has and, and continues to provide our core with tremendous talent. Uh, uh, just recently in Berlin at our event, uh, I met two or three uh, students who are about to graduate and, and spoke to them. They're just absolutely wonderful. Their passion, their questions, their uh, awareness. Um, it's just wonderful to see it. And I hope I've convinced them to stay in the industry and join this wonderful company there. But what I'm going to end with, Ines, like I normally do, is where it's not planned at all. It's a couple of uh, it's a couple of quick questions, one word answers, very quick answers there, which has been extremely well received by a lot of people there. So I'm going to put you a little bit under the uh, fire there with these questions there. Um, here we go. Travel is back. Where are you going next on your travels for work or pleasure? Uh, work, well, Campus Singapore is obviously um, because we have a campus there. So work, uh, definitely. And hopefully one day also back to Shanghai. We have a master there and in, in with CIBS. And hopefully when the lockdown is over there, we look very much forward. Fantastic. If you could go to one city in the world right now on pleasure, which would it be? Oh, so many. I like traveling um, on the road. Um It's been a while I haven't been to Rome and, and I'm a big foodie. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, Rome, why not? Yes. Rome. So you, so you can answer the next one. Favorite cuisine to eat? Oh, I've, again, I, I um, and I'm so grateful to work at EHL for that. Um, uh, I'm a big fan of Asian cuisine, but I'm, I'm born Tunisian and half French. So a mix of French and Tunisian is also my favorite, to be honest. Fantastic. Favorite part of traveling? Favorite part of traveling? First day on the site. Ah, fantastic. And best advice, Ines, you've ever been given? 
oh, uh, from my dad, um, do whatever you like, whatever that drives you. But as a girl and as a woman, make sure that you are financially independent. That was his only advice. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. I have to pass it on to my daughter. <laughs> yes, listen, thank you so much. Uh, um, I'm based, in, as you know, in, Swiss, in, in Switzerland as well. Mm -hmm. We definitely have to come and meet up and see how we can also do some more things together with the school. But again, uh, really, really appreciate you taking the time. It's very special for us, very special for our call for this podcast. And uh, we really, really appreciate uh, you taking the well, time. Well, thank you very Thanks. much for having me. And yes, please let me know next time. Um, our restaurants are really great. <laughs> and um, and we enjoy having visitors, especially since co even more after COVID. So please let us know. It would be great to have you. Fantastic. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Heart of Hospitality was hosted by Duncan O'Rourke, CEO of Accor Northern Europe. To find out more about the people that make this sector so special, visit our website and find us on Facebook and Instagram.